Oh, hello there. Yes, well, sorry about the lack of visuals. I've been, well, metaphorically screaming into the twilight this morning, but I can't get my camera to do anything other than show me a white light. Hmm. Anyway, yesterday we had a bit of dust settling after the traumatic events of the local elections. Uh, there was a bit of drama yesterday when uh, various ex-BBC uh, journalists sort of suggested that um, Susan Hall might win the mayoral elections, which of course she didn't. And um, yes, yeah, so, so I thought today we'd look at the... Um, the sort of fallout in one way or another from this and whatever lessons we might pick up, especially from our glorious commentariat. Um, the most intriguing thing, perhaps, was having had about six months of fairly relentless reform propaganda in the form of GB News and their allies at The Telegraph and The Mail. The astounding uh, figures that we have for the local elections are that their actual number of councillors dropped by a third because they now have two seats, yes folks, count them, two seats, whereas before they had three. Now, these people are always being presented as the sensible alternative to the Conservatives, and you would have thought with a kind of ground-shaking, I'm not voting Conservatives, but I'm definitely voting Reform thing that might go on the local elections, that um, they'd pick up more than minus one seats, but it wasn't to be. And various people will, of course, go, well, of course, you know, in local elections, people vote differently. Yes, they do, but our commentariat was then jumping up and down about a particular Green candidate up north who appeared to get in on a Gaza vote, which of course is unfair. You, you can send a message to Sadiq Khan, obviously, about being unhappy, but you can't send a, a message to Sadiq Khan. Anyway, yes, that doesn't quite work out, does it? So, um... This morning we are left with um, quite a lot of Green councillors, good night for them, quite a lot of independents, probably one way or another, and quite a lot of not particularly Conservatives, or indeed Reform. So why is it that uh, you lot voted the wrong way? Well, <laughs> during the afternoon and evening and overnight, we have the usual suspects. We've got Connor Tomlinson. When Sadiq, with Sadiq winning re-election as the Mayor of London, the message had been sent that the, to, that the English and their way of life is unwelcome in their own capital city. Yes, indeed. You see, you see Connor, being a white racist that he is, um, can't quite get his head around the fact that people might not vote the same way as him. After all, the world is white male from Bexley, South East London, in case you don't know. It's the epitome of boredom. It's even more boring than Bromley. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, uh, people in, in, in London have voted the wrong way. Think about that. Think about that. When right-wingers tell you that there's something up with democracy, we'll come back to that concept. But yes, people can't be trusted. Um, <laughs> uh, another kind of uh, platforming of people. Um, um, yesterday, after there was a, there was a, uh, Amy Gallagher, one of the mayoral candidates, was once again platformed by Peter Whittle. Hi, I'm Peter Whittle on the New Culture Forum. And um, they came up with the idea that you morons have to be told by people like me how to vote. Yeah, you know, wall to wall coverage of the Reform Party doesn't work at all. But magically, me putting out my video with four and a half of you watching, the half being the person that decides to slag me off in the wee hours in the morning or whatever is magically having an effect. Anyway, she didn't quite do as well as she was expecting. So yeah, we do get the the wonderful look at that face from Darren Grimes as the news came in. Yes. Doesn't quite fit, does it? Does it? Those concerned ULES supporters. You know when you get those ULES mass protests out and there's at least 25 of them. Might not that be a hint that people aren't thinking those things? Oh no, no, no. They're too scared to come out on the streets because of the Islam. Um, probably the apogee of this was our beautiful friar Calvin Robinson. Britons are now a minority in our capital city. 
Think about that. Uh, think about what he means by, by Britons. Yes, he means good Christians. Not the same people as the skin colour as him, because we can't go there with Friar Calvin Robinson. He can, obviously, because that's OK. Them's the rules. But the rest of us can't. Brits have no voice because of an incompatible invading force has dry, drowned us out. Yes, that's him and God. Doesn't include me. Obviously, voting does not work. Democracy is a false idol. Life crime is an all-time high. London is a den of iniquity. Iniquity, ooh, it is lost. London has fallen. Yes, yes. You see, you voted the wrong way. <laughs> Once again, you you voted the wrong way. We get turning point. You remember? May remember turning point? They often have mass uh, uh, anti-drag protests as well, where almost almost eleven people, a dog, and Lawrence Fox turn up to. We'll come back to Lawrence Fox. When you look up and down the country and you see election and re-election of extremists, Marxists, and nutters. Ah, uh, yeah. Who are the nutters? I wonder. Anyway, uh, ask yourself: What are you going to do about it? Britain has become unrecognisable. Will you join us on the streets or will you continue to roll over? Well, um, turning point, I think it's roll over, actually, because that's what people want. That's the problem with democracy. Often people do the wrong thing. Uh, good old Sophie Kukoran, who, credit to her, has uh, done most sterling work in Peterborough keeping the Tory vote up. But here we go. How do people look at London, see kids getting stabbed, old people getting robbed and working class people getting taxed left, right and centre, no comma obviously, for driving, which whilst the rich do what they want and think, yep, I want more of that. Yes, you see, Sophie, but you never apply that logic to what people might feel about, for example, the Conservative Party or the Reform Party. Could it be that people are actually quite intelligent and will base their logical decisions on, drum roll, their logical circumstances? Not according to Sophie because you must not, whatever you do, vote for people that aren't as right-wing as she is. Yeah, we need more racists in the country, apparently. There just aren't enough bigots. Yes, GB News uh, managed to uh, uh, report uh, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, the... Uh, the announcement uh, in in a way that uh, centred on, uh, uh, bless her, Susan Hall. Susan Hall, who, let's face it, was a very, 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 very third-rate candidate. Nobody in their right mind, if you were going to choose a Conservative candidate for London, would think, yep, that's got to be Susan Hall. Anyway, um, yes, they highlighted the fact that Sadiq Khan is a very nasty, bad man who you shouldn't vote for. Still, even... When you get Susan Hall bitching about him, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the one being horrible to him. I know that he was a bit horrible back. You might argue, OK, fine. That's maybe the cut and thrust of politics, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. We're allowed to be snowflakes, they scream. It's not fair that these people use all this rhetoric when the guy's an evil Islamist who wants to kill our children. Yeah, leave that one hanging in the air. Um... <laughs> Britain first did their usual thing about shouting and screaming and throwing their prams out of their toys or other metaphors you can think of um, because they got, I don't know, something like 2,000 votes across London. Yeah, there's a groundswell of support, Paul. Yeah, anyway, um, decided um, uh, in lots of ways to highlight the fact that, um, that because there was a lot going on on stage, Sadiq Khan didn't immediately shake Susan Hall's hand, which, of course, our beloved Calvin Robinson turned into nasty Islamist story, which will do the rounds for the next few months when we're told about how nobody wants him in London. Odd that he's been voted for a historic third term, but don't let facts get in the way. But my favourite story, of course, was from good old Loza Deposit, who managed not to get on the London Assembly. Hmm, interesting one, that. So, of course, it means that the people are wrong and have been led elsewhere. Good night, Twitter, he said last night. Nostalgia for the time when we were led by leaders instead of recent university graduates. Yes, indeed, except, of course, um, all the leaders of the major political parties are not recent university graduates by, well, quite a long chalk. But never mind that, because we mustn't let the facts get in the way. The Loza deposit that he is. And that's a bit rich coming from a posh boy who basically is best known for being a bloke on the telly. Yeah, 
Yeah, because that's what we want from our political leaders, don't we? We want somebody with an interesting habit who's a friend of Mr. Robinson in one way or another. And you can make up your mind which one which, which one I'm referring to when I say it's the racist one. Yes. So, bless him. He didn't quite get the things they were after. And this morning we have the inevitable, the inevitable doubling down on things. We've got Suella Braveman, who was given pride of place. She uh, obviously had an article ready to go for the Telegraph yesterday um, where she says oh you need to vote for me hmm. now the thing that intrigues me about of course Suella brave man is if you recall she was the one who had to be brought back after a week or so as home secretary because only she could stop the votes only she could stop the votes and here we are with the boats and a person who's been paid to go to Rwanda. But there's Suella Brave Man, obviously. Yes, yes, the Tories must change course. How about the fact that people don't want to vote for the Conservatives as they are? Oh, well, OK, then. Let's be even more um, not particularly pleasant individuals than we were before. I'm sure that'll garner a lot of votes. Yes, I'm sure it won't. But perhaps the idea might be, Suella, that you'd better come up with the idea of, you know, um, changing the system. I mean, it was intriguing that the mayoral votes yesterday had to be first past the post because the Conservatives felt that that was their best chance of getting rid of Sadiq Khan. Didn't work. But the London Assembly elections were basically based on PR and that didn't go so well either. So I'm presuming that this time round, what they'll do, if they can manage it, is um, bring in some new laws which basically mean that... um, you can't vote if you go to the mosque or something similar. Yes, uh, <laughs> there were the usual calls elsewhere this morning to um, uh, be more right wing. And as I always say in these circumstances, it's a bit like arguing that Stalin didn't kill enough people. Yeah, well, if we just shoot another 10,000, we'll get communism. Yes, lessons not learned from a bunch of people who can't deal with the idea that, number one, they're intellectually bankrupt. Number two, they're completely divorced from reality. Number three, they don't really believe in democracy. And number four, they still hold an awful lot of power and are going to be very, very nasty and dangerous with it. Yes, chilling news for today. Anyway... The sun is slowly rising, which is kind of nice. I've got a reasonably happy pussycat who's been well fed after a night on the tiles. It's going to be a nice day. Make the best use of it and uh, make sure that you, you know, keep your own mind because, by God, it hacks them off. And at heart, that's quite amusing. Anyway, I'll try and get a camera sorted for tomorrow. Do have a lovely day.